We have achieved a great accomplishment, 250 subscribers, thank you all. By the time the war was over, not only had the Mosquito proven itself to be capable, but in many ways extraordinary. These aircraft primarily built by carpenters using commonplace materials. The Timber Terror Such a plane wouldn't be particularly fast, given its heavy weight. So the engineers discussed adding two additional engines, to bring it up to the speed of existing bombers. After some consideration, the original thinkers at de Havilland concluded that the best way to defend an aircraft wasn't with bristling machine guns, but by making it so fast, that nothing in the sky could catch it. The approach seemed reasonable, so the design team continued to tinker with their wooden aircraft concept, though it still hadn't received the blessing of the RAF. They discarded the gun turrets in four of the crew positions, a reduction which significantly decreased the estimated weight. They also paid close attention to the aerodynamics of the craft, aiming for a skin as slippery as that of a fighter plane. With its pair of supercharged Merlin engines, the lightweight plywood design was estimated to have a top speed of 400 miles per hour, with a full bomb load, easily outpacing Germany's fastest fighters. Further testing also discovered that the aircraft could easily heft four times the load it had been designed for. Official attitudes towards the Mosquito quickly changed, after observing the prototype in action. The RAF ordered a number of the aircraft in several configurations, including bombers, heavy fighters, and photo reconnaissance. De Havilland enlisted the assistance of carpenters, piano makers, cabinet builders, and other woodworkers who had been previously unable to make an appreciable contribution to the war effort. Sub-assemblies were constructed in places such as furniture factories, then sent to the de Havilland plant for final assembly, in large concrete molds. To speed production, engineers developed a technique where the glue was rapidly dry, with the assistance of microwaves. The unlikely wooden aircraft quickly established itself, as one of the most useful planes, in the Royal Air Force. The bomber varieties could deliver a payload comparable to that of the flying fortresses, while consuming less fuel, putting fewer lives in danger, and cruising at about twice the speed of the larger bombers. The Mosquito was also useful for low-altitude runs, where squadrons of Mosquitoes flying at rooftop heights dropped their ordnance with precision, departing at full speed with German interceptors, in hopeless pursuit. The heavy fighter version proved to be fast and deadly, flying bomber escorts, and shooting down almost 500 of Germany's V-1 rockets. Some fighters were given a 57mm cannon, and rockets for sinking U-boats at sea. A night fighter variant was equipped with Britain's new, top-secret radar set, allowing the Mosquito to find its prey in the darkness. When British intelligence learned that the commander of the German, Luftwaffe Hermann Göring was due to address a Nazi parade in Berlin, on 31 January 1943, they devised a plan to demoralize the enemy. Göring had long boasted that Germany's capital was safe from Allied bombers, but on that morning the lie was given to his claims when a mess of bombs was delivered to the rally by a gaggle of mosquitoes. Another squadron of mosquitoes went on to disrupt a second rally in Berlin, on the same afternoon. On a separate occasion, British mosquito pilots conducted very low-altitude bombing of Gestapo headquarters, destroying important records and freeing numerous prisoners. Due to daring raids such as these, the mosquito came to be affectionately known by the nicknames, Wooden Wonder, and, Timber Terror. Even Hermann Göring himself held the Mosquito in high regard. Perhaps the most daring Mosquito raid was that of Operation Jericho, a bold and somewhat desperate undertaking, meant to free condemned prisoners of war. On the 18th of February 1944, a flight group consisting of 19 Mosquito bombers along, with fighter escorts dashed at top speed, over Nazi-occupied France towards Amiens prison. Allied forces had learned that 120 captured members of the French resistance were scheduled to be executed there the following day, and an audacious plan was hatched in the hopes that some of the prison's 717 prisoners might escape. Impact. The Mosquito also played a small role in the Pacific theater, but its use was limited, because its wood and glue construction proved to be problematic in the humid climate. 
Some planes quite literally came unglued due to the heat and moisture, a problem which may have led to a few crashes. By the time the war was over, not only had the Mosquito proven itself to be capable, but in many ways extraordinary. These aircraft primarily built by carpenters using commonplace materials, flew over 28,000 missions for Bomber Command, and only 193 of them were lost in the duration of the war. A Mosquito named F for Freddy held the record for the most bombing runs, by a single aircraft in World War II, having executed 213 sorties. The last Mosquito was built in 1950, and the Wooden Wonder remained the fastest aircraft in Bomber Command, until 1951. Unfortunately, the wood construction has not weathered the years as well as it weathered the war. Only about 30 preserved specimens remain, and none are airworthy. The original prototype survived, however, and is currently undergoing complete restoration in the de Havilland Aircraft Heritage Center, in Hertfordshire, United Kingdom.